All right, thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, anytime we get an opportunity to connect and network like this, it's uh, something that we all, all should take advantage of as coaches. So just really thankful to to be on here today and get a chance to talk some ball in April. Uh, yeah, so my topic today, I, I chose something beyond X's and O's, and there might be some suggestions in here that many of you guys do, um, things that, that you've had a lot of success with. So um, definitely not uh, not the inventor of any of this. Everything in football is stolen. Um, but I think this is such a critical topic. Uh, I think the, the future of football is going to depend more on this uh, as we get going. And uh, so I just hope I can highlight a few things to help help others out. And if you ever have any questions or anything, please, you know, reach out. Uh, if not today, you know, down the road in the future, I plan to be, on, be at Ogden for a while. So uh, I know sometimes we get back to these things a little bit later as coaches. And uh, yeah, you'll know where to find me. You know, just a little bit about me, my, my wife, Maggie and I, um, oh, I didn't correct that there. We've actually been married 14 years. My wife Ooh. and I had gone through this earlier and yeah, so there's minus one for me already, but, um, we've been together 14 years. I have four children. Our, our daughter, Janetta was a foster daughter and, uh, has been with us for two years. She goes to the university of Northern Iowa. Um, then I have my, my oldest son, Carson, my middle son, Parker, and then my, my daughter is Adeline. I uh, played my college football at Morningside college. It's now Morningside university. Um, my time there was awesome. We finished the top five in the nation, but since I've left, they've won multiple conference championships, multiple national titles at the NAI level. And, um, coach Steve Ryan is a hall of fame coach and he was my position coach in college. So I learned a lot from him and really enjoyed it. Um, then I went Sibley Ochina high school, small school in, in Northwest Iowa. I was there for two years. I was the defensive coordinator there for a season and then went back to my hometown of Sheldon, uh, and was there for 11 years. Um, coached a lot of different things there. Uh, was an assistant coach for my for my hero, my high school head coach Matt Mandring, who's now the principal at Dowling Catholic in Des Moines, and learned a lot from him. And then I uh, got my start as a head coach there as well, and kind of thought my life would play out like a, like a storybook, and I'd be there forever. And that didn't happen. And here I am at Ogden. Um, started this past season, uh, moved here July 31. Uh, started camp July 31. So it's been. Uh, quite the transition for, for myself and my family, but that's where we find ourselves currently. And we've really enjoyed our move here. And um, then I, I put the playoff qualifier things there. I think that's a, that's a goal you've got to aspire to in coaching. And so I've been fortunate enough to be a part of five different playoff teams and three as the head coach. So those are the ones that are in bold there. And, you know, you just kind of take those things and keep moving forward. And then my hook, I always said, if I had an opportunity to share, you know, anything about my life or my journey in coaching, I, I always wanted to touch on this. My, my youngest son, Parker, uh, at the age of two, was diagnosed with a pre-leukemic condition and had a life-saving bone marrow transplant. Uh, so as coaches, I know we network and, and we have, you know, situations that arise in our community and those types of things. Um, if, if you ever have a situation with pediatric cancer or anything like that, I'm willing to network with anybody on that, something that's really close to my heart. Um, my wife and I have used this, uh, for good. And, um, you know, obviously our outcome was very positive and my son lives like a normal 11 year old right now. Um, and that's not always the case. Um, but he did, he had a life-saving bone marrow transplant at, at the university of Minnesota. We're big Iowa fans. So, um, you gotta give uh, Minnesota their props, uh, there where it's due, but, um, just, just those things, uh, make sure I always wanted to share that. Uh, as I get a chance to network with people from all around the nation, because it really is a small world at times. And um, if anybody, you know, is, is going through anything like that, anybody in the coaching realm, uh, my son was released from the hospital January 27th of 2015. And I was offered the head coaching job at Sheldon that, that March. Um, so that was a quick transition there. Um, it was a scary undertaking at that time, not knowing um, if that transplant had worked or not. And uh, like I said, here we are today. So just wanted to make sure I got that plug out there. Um, you know, my personal mission statements listed there. I just want my children, biological foster students, players, those to just have a better life than I did growing up. I had an absent father um, and that made things difficult growing up, both just as being a male in society and then um, financially and those kinds of things. And so I just always use that as my driving force moving forward and you know, then, then I drive into my vision. It's a player's game and games are intended to be fun. And I went to the Oxford dictionary, you know, the old Google search and, uh, you know, you guys can read the definition there, but I highlighted and, and colored the word luck. So winning is not all, you know, the pieces that we put together, the plays that we draw, the play call that we had on fourth down, that was just phenomenal. Sometimes punt is the best play call. 
Um, but there is a there is an element of luck there, and you've got to have that um, in there as well. And and we're we're there for the drive and and the competition, those kinds of things. But our players might be dealing with something different. And then the other thing I ask coaches all the time is, would you play for you? And I think that's something that it takes a long time to kind of sit back, look in the mirror and say, am I somebody that I would have played for? I was inspired by Matt Maindring, my high school head coach, um, not because of his football knowledge, but because he took an interest in my life. And I didn't play football as a freshman. And here I had this at the time, uh, Coach Maindring was the JV coach saying, hey, you should really be out for football. And just those words kind of drove me. Uh, to go out and I had a wonderful playing career, wonderful experiences, obviously led to a college career. Um, he changed my life just by showing an interest in me. So I think we can never underestimate the platform that we have in this position. And that's something that we've got to keep in mind. That, you know, and Coach Maynard ended up being my head coach my junior and senior year of high school. We played for a state championship. I mean, it was a, it was a phenomenal experience. So just don't underestimate those things. And then, I, yeah, obviously I have the, uh, you know, the, quote there from the movie remember the titans zero fun sir and that's how football used to be um that's not how football can be anymore i don't believe that um if you're running your program that way kudos to you you must have a really supportive community um but i think kids are there because they want to have fun and play the game you know statistically i'm not going to read all this for you but we're losing kids at a rapid rate and i think that's why we need to look sometimes outside the x's and o's because that, that all-star quarterback at the seventh grade level, you might have a really hard time getting him to come out as a freshman for a variety of reasons. And I think post-COVID, we're more aware of some of the things that are, you know, outlined on the left with, you know, substance abuse, uh, mental health issues, eating disorders, those kinds of things. And I could, you know, fall down that rabbit hole of coaching and tell you all kinds of stories of players dealing with a lot of things that I never would have anticipated. Players who didn't want to gain weight. Um, because they didn't want that physique, but it would have really helped their recruiting. And I think those are things that we need to keep in the forefront of our minds and maybe not in the back of our minds. And then there's just a lot of pressure that's out there. Um, there's a lot of different things that uh, are placed on kids. And I know there's also the counter argument that we've gone soft and we've done all those things. But as coaches, these are the kids that we're getting. Um, one of the biggest changes that I had moving from Sheldon to Ogden Sheldon was a school that had just gone over 50% free and reduced lunch. And I know there's a lot of coaches out there that can, you know, attest to those same things and numbers that are even higher, but it creates a lot of barriers that you wouldn't anticipate. Now coming to Ogden, we're at 23% free and reduced lunch. And I can tell you, it is a lot different. It changes the way that I coach. So we need to keep these things in mind as well and continue to have this dialogue and, and conversations with players. And um, I think football is unique because we need more players than any other sport. Also, we need the 18-year-old players. We need the guys that are older because we don't know how a kid's going to grow, mature, and develop. I was a middle school quarterback. That was not my claim to fame in high school. I moved to the offensive line for the better. And so that's something that a lot of kids face, a lot of kids go through. And I think as coaches, we need to keep that in mind. So some of the nuts and bolts here um, that I've outlined in this presentation, um, and I tried to kind of break things down you know, from a cost perspective, because that's, I, I did a podcast with uh, Coach Salas that was released in February and outlined some of these things. So I'll try to, you know, be cognizant of time and, and not go on my coach's soapbox here for too long. But um, I tried to break them down into things that are free, things that are about under 1500 bucks, because I think I could get that done here at Ogden and then things that are over 1500 bucks. Now, Ogden's a class 1A school in the state of Iowa. Uh, we have about 250 students in our building give or take uh, grades nine, 12, and I have about 50 kids on my roster. So that gives you kind of a, a sense of where we're at. Um, but some of the free strategies that I have on there and things that I've used, call every boy in the high school to gauge their interest in playing football. And even, and I, and I say this and I, and I mean it, even if they're out for cross country, you know, when they write country songs, they don't write about running around a golf course. They write about playing on Friday nights or being on the team on a Friday night and uh, uh, there's dual sport policies in place. I've had them at both schools that I've been a head coach at. You'd be amazed at how many kids um, would would consider that. Now, it takes some flexibility on both coaches' parts. So I guess you got to kind of know uh, what you're stepping into. But at Sheldon, my wife was the head cross-country coach. So that was pretty easy to have those conversations with her. And I know at Ogden, we're sharing kids all the time. Um, I haven't had a player take me up on that. But I'm also not going to let that be the reason that I don't have another body on the sidelines on a Friday night because uh, talented kids are talented kids, runners are runners, and 
everybody needs them and we're all sharing them and we've got to be cognizant of that. Um, this whole calling thing started during COVID because I didn't have contact with my kids, you know, all, all schools closed down and hadn't seen them for a long time. And it was a really unique thing to call kids and ask, Hey, you're going to come out for football. And, and when I started as a head coach in 2015, we only had 38 kids on our roster and we went 0 and 9. So that takes a lot of reflection there too. And I think it was for the better. I think every coach should go 0 and 9 their first year as a head coach. That really humbles you. Um, but post COVID, we had 81 kids show up one day for camp. Now they were looking for a lot of different things um, during that time. I think kids were bored uh, by that point as well. But I also think that these phone calls helped a lot. I heard about kids remodeling bathrooms. I heard about kids that, um, that, you know, that had gone on, you know, family trips or vacations and all those kinds of things. So it's become, it's become the norm. I'll sit down the last couple of weeks of July and start calling kids. And if it's kind of, if it's not a hard no, I'll call the kids as parents and then have that conversation as well. Um, because you just want those things pushed on there. And I, again, I could go down the rabbit hole and give you countless examples of kids who have come out just based on the phone call. Um, another thing I would say is when you finish your camp week, and I don't know what that looks like for these other states, but when you finish camp week, you know, think of something fun that you can do. Games. Um, we, we call them the Olympics. So Sheldon has the worst mascot in America. Okay? It was voted by ESPN. Sheldon was the home of the Orobs. It's a combination of the school colors, orange and black. You can look it up. It's real. I graduated from there. I'm an Orob, okay? And so we had the Orob Olympics. Well, now I'm in Ogden. We're the Bulldogs. So I have Bulldog Olympics that, that we do. So we come up with a bunch of games and things. We, you can have them compete by grade. You can have them draft cadres or teams. I know that's a really popular thing. But think of something you can do there. Um, player day, where they lead the workouts or the practice. Those are really fun. As coaches, you can stand by the fence or, or uh, you know, you got to keep some sort of supervision on them. But you know, have, have the kids kind of run it, see what it looks like. Cause they're a reflection of you. If you really want some feedback there and you want to give them some ownership. That's, that's a really easy thing to do there. Uh, signing day. If you're not doing signing days in the spring, uh, I really would, you know, suggest that you do that. I think that's something that's really exciting for the community. You can blast it on social media. You can put it out there. Uh, handwritten notes. When we went 0 and 9, that was something that I started doing right away. Um, was trying to highlight things that I saw during basketball or wrestling from from my players um, that I could say, hey, you know, you made those two key free throws the other night. That's huge. You're going to perform in crunch time for us come fall. Um, and kids don't get those things anymore. And schools have stationary and everything like that. That's free. And then we have an adopt a player program, which I already mentioned. I talked about on uh, the Joe Salas podcast in more detail, but we have members of the community. I sent out a letter. Uh, I've stood up in front of the church groups and those kinds of things to try to get uh, players to or try to get community members to adopt a player of ours and support them during the season. And the only thing I ask for is words of encouragement and they send it to the school and, and that's it. Now it's blossomed. It, it becomes more than that. It becomes care packages, uh, meals out to eat, text messages, uh, all kinds of things. Um, but that's a that's a free thing to start. And I, I would highly I would I would encourage you to to think about that. Um, some of those things that are under $1,500, you know, take a day off, go to the pool. What are you out? I mean, really, these the kids are going to talk about this. They're going to tell their friends to come out. Um, you, it's hot out there. Like, come on, we're miserable too sometimes. So, you know, do those things. I would also suggest as a coach, purchase an offensive and defensive system. Uh, I don't I don't work for JDFB. I'm not a Kenny Simpson disciple. I'm just saying, like, there's stuff out there. When I went 0-9, I purchased an offensive and defensive system. I don't even run either one of those systems anymore um, because of the clientele that I have, but they're worth their weight in gold, and it helps streamline things for you as a coach. And that is that is X's and O's related, but it takes some of that work off your plate and allows you to focus more on the kids. Uh, have those team meals. Uh, we have kids over all the time. I've served tacos, burgers, I've ordered pizzas, all those kinds of things. Um, that kind of stuff is, is big for kids and it adds up, but you know what, you'd be amazed at, you know, what parent groups want to be involved with that, what booster clubs want to, want to be a part of that. And we try to do something like that with our guys at least, uh, once a month. And then we have a junior senior player retreat. And I talked about this at length on, on my podcast, uh, with Joe, Joe Salas, but we take our juniors and seniors and we go to, um, an area of college. That's what it's become. The first year we were at a retreat center by a, by a lake and we just hang out. And, and that first year we were just coming off an 0-9 season and we had lost 14 games in a row 
we did zero, well, not zero football. We did very little football. Um, we did a seven on seven with a local team up at the lakes. And then that was, that was it. And we played ghost in the graveyard and we ran around and did all that stuff. Um, we didn't feed the kids as well as we do now. Uh, that was something I learned. They didn't just want peanut butter and jelly, but that was something cheap that I could throw out there. Um, but that was, that was a really, uh, unique time and experience for us. And we came back, we won our first game that year against a team who was ranked in the top 10. And I'm not saying it was the retreat, but I don't think it hurt. And I think it really fortified us for what we were going to go through. And, and that team went on to have great success um, and was a phenomenal team, kind of a foundational building block for us uh, moving forward and, and a team that's going to be remembered in school history for a really long time. So I would encourage you to do that. Now that's more, if I, I take them to college campuses now. Um, I like the dorm setting a little better because it helps me kind of keep an eye on them. Also it gives them exposure to college coaches. Uh, the other thing I was dealing with at Sheldon, I didn't have kids that were college bound. So this gave them an opportunity to get a tour of campus. The, the coaches that I'm in contact with at multiple colleges love it because it's free recruiting for them. Uh, their new coaches on staff get a chance to practice giving a tour. And I just think there's a lot to, there's a lot, to take there with you and it doesn't have to be anything great. And I'm telling you, it's under 1500 bucks. And that's without, that's without asking for the booster club to kick in. Or, you know, if, if you're well off and you've got a good club program account or whatever, I'm saying like bare bones, you can get that done for like 1,000, 1200 bucks for about 28, 30 kids, you know, five, six coaches. It's phenomenal. Call restaurants, ask for a college discount. Most places will give that to you um, just by giving them a heads up. So, there's some things there that, that you can take from that middle category. And then lastly, the over $1,500, you know, for us, it's pizza after every game. I know some programs, you probably have great parent support and those kinds of things. Um, I was dealing with some things in my previous uh, position that just parents weren't as involved. Um, we had a higher Hispanic population, so that just created its own barrier there. And then when we asked them at the end of the season, what do you like best about the season? You know, you'd love it to be winning, right? It was pizza after the game. So, yeah, you can say X's and O's all you want, but if you take care of kids and you meet those basic needs that they have, they're going to run through a brick wall for you. So that was something that we did there. Um, we use fundraising incentives. Now, fundraising in itself, I think, is going to change as we go into the future. But when we do incentives for fundraising, we do team incentives. So if we sell 100 cards of whatever it is, we get music in the locker room. If we sell 200 cards, they can have music at the practice field. That doesn't cost me anything. And it motivates the kids to work as a team. Now, when you get up there a little bit higher, um, we get into these player packs where they get three T-shirts, a pair of shorts. They got stocking hats one year. They got Under Armour hoodies another year. Um, I always call our vendors and suppliers to see if they're, like, closing out anything that I can get at a discount. And I'll buy it early because I kind of know the numbers of my program. And then I can go um, off of that a little bit and you'll have kids. So we, at Sheldon, I was in a community of 5,000 people. We would sell a thousand cards. Ogden's a community of about 20, 2,100, 2,300 people. We sold 750 cards last year. And the, every kid on the roster gets that stuff. If you walk into Sheldon high school today, I guarantee that there's a third of that school walking around with something that's Sheldon or football forever orbs. That was our, that was our thing there. Um, here it's dogs, D A W -G -S. I don't know why it's just what it is. So that's what they do. And you brand those kids and they're walking around and hey, I got this for free. You don't think there's a kid in your hallways that wants free clothes. You're crazy. And they'll hand it down to their younger siblings. It's a phenomenal thing to give it to their parents. And as Sheldon with that free and reduced lunch challenge that we had there, they didn't have school gear. They didn't have school apparel. So that was one way that we could filter it in there and get our kids wearing orange and black every day. Um, Guardian Caps, I don't work for Guardian Cap. I'm just telling you, it's a really good thing that we invested in at both programs. Uh, it was really positive. Knock on wood, I haven't had a single concussion at practice since we started using those things. We got our we got them for our middle schoolers here. So 712, we're all in the Guardian Cap. It's a phenomenal thing. And then we started a youth program development uh, here. So we have, it's AAU. I don't know if that's a curse word in other states, but it's really crazy for us. And so it's AAU affiliated, but we're running it through our tiny little town. And that has been something that we're willing to invest in. It takes a lot of time. My wife helps me. I love her. You know, so I, I, I really appreciate her help with that. Um, but that has been huge for us. And that's going to be, you know, something that we ride on into the future with that. It's only 7v7. 
Uh, so, you know, the ball is in the air through running and catching and those kinds of things. And everybody wants to be the quarterback. Uh, but this is something that is, I think, the the future way for us and something that we can invest in. And that club account is going to come around and help us with all kinds of things, both in our youth development and at our high school level. Um, lastly here, I mean, I think some things to think about as we get into the future and things that I'm continually working on. My wife gets mad at me. Why are you always doing something? Why, why is this always changing? Why are you? I think that's just the nature of who I am. And I think as coaches, it's something we need to be cognizant of. Um, so I think you've got to increase social media presence. That's free. That's free. I didn't use X, you know, it's, or was Twitter. Now it's X. I didn't use that stuff till this year because I wanted to tell my own story. I was sick and tired of people telling my story for me and not allowing me to tell it. So I tell my own story. So if you follow me on there, I've got, you know, the stuff that I do on a daily basis and it is, it is real. That's the stuff that we're doing and that's free. I think you got to prioritize nutrition daily and post-workout. Um, so we're looking at how can we get more food into our building and then how can we get it to our kids post-workout and then our kids lift every other day. How can we feed them every day? I, it's, it's a challenge. I want to take it on. I want to take it head on because everybody's lifting. Everybody's lifting and you can say, well, I don't get good numbers in my lifting. Pro Everybody's lifting some way, somewhat. What is the next wave? I think it's that nutrition piece, but that's going to cost you some money. You're going to have to figure that part out. And then the last one there, recruiting. Yep, absolutely. hundred percent. And I know that's probably not what a lot of us want to hear. Um, but you know what? College coaches don't want to hear about NIL. And I think that's the reality for us. And one of the things that made this job attractive for me was at Sheldon, I was losing kids to two private schools in our area. There isn't a private school within 40 miles of Ogden, Iowa. And there's a 4A school eight miles down the road. So you tell me what the future is going to look like if I'm increasing social media, increasing participation, prioritizing some of these things for development. There's going to be a kid that says, I want to be a part of that. I want free t-shirts. I want pizza. I want to be recruited. Let's be honest. People want to feel loved. And if they're not feeling loved in their current program, it is what it is. Iowa, we passed a voucher program. It's, it is what it is. And I know other states are dealing with it too. So really appreciate the opportunity. Like I said, you know, there's a lot there. Tried to breeze through it quick. I was checking my timer. Gosh, I did great. <laughs> I did good for me. And uh, so those are some places you can contact me. I put my cell phone on here, but I don't want to get you know, blown up with a bunch of bot calls and those kinds of things. Um, and like I said, I'm at Ogden High School. So if you want to look me up on the staff directory, you can get my contact information there as well. Oh, Coach, per I mean, generally, I will say I'm highly impressed with the timing of that. That is like uh, like almost 20 minutes, like probably 20, 21 minutes on the dot. So when I say 20 to 25 minutes, I, like I said, I'm impressed. Um, you hit that on the dot. I mean, just I mean, every area obviously is different. And we all have our own needs. And I kind of like I've kind of been a lot of your situations. Um, so you, you talked about nutrition there. Where, where are the main way? Who, who are you going through? How are you targeting nutrition? Um, where are you looking at it getting? That's kind of my question um, in terms of helping your student athletes. Yeah, so we have um, we have some local dairy associations um, that are run through the county. Um, so they can get you some grant funding and those kinds of things for like increased milk products and that type of stuff. Um, now the issue you're going to have there is storage and uh, trash because everything comes in a carton. So that, that creates some, some barriers there as well. Um, I've also reached out to our local grocers. Now Sheldon, I had two grocery stores that I could kind of network with and we never were able to get anything off the ground, but I had had kind of an ups up or uh, developed kind of a decreased uh, payment for granola bars so that we would at least have something there um, to give our kids. And then, you know, just taking that and then kind of moving that forward. Cause in Sheldon, we started a backpack program for disadvantaged kids. That would have been like 2011, 2012, and that just exploded. So I kind of viewed this potentially moving that same way if we can get the wheels in motion. So it's been, been like a two two and a half year project and i don't have any set answers for you um but that is kind of the pathways that that we're intending to use okay i was just curious because like i said i've i've spent a lot of money on gatorade um because gatorade does that discount every year so yep. like for for schools and so i've spent a hefty sum there and then also as as anytime i see stuff on clearance at like kroger or anything 
like just buy stuff in bulk. Um, like even like protein powder, protein bars, powder does go a long way. Cause I, I probably went to about 13 different Goodwills and just bought every protein shaker I could find. Those are 50 cents a dollar at a Goodwill. So instead of paying Absolutely. your 10 to 15 bucks. So those are easy to clean. Um, Absolutely. So, okay. That's it. That's that my main thing. So, um, coaches that are jumping on and off or watching us later or whatever, um, make sure you uh, check out coach's Twitter and his other contact information that's on the screen and how to get a hold of him. If you have questions, um, coach is really easy to get a hold of. I mean, I message him on uh, Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. And we, I mean, we start talking what a matter of within, within an hour. Um, so like I said, don't hesitate, uh, reach out to coach. He does, he's <laughs> doing a great job over there. And, um, again, this is the little stuff that matters. It's not the, the off the field stuff that builds for your community and your kids. And, um, anytime you can help your community, I think is kind of a, a win-win for everybody, not just from a football perspective, but just for overall. Um, and then I think that's about it coach. So you can unshare your screen. Appreciate you. Um, yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. No problem coach.